Vi sätter nu över till Akers hus slott där Nobels fredspris vill bli överleverat. President Sadat och statsminister Begin. Först en presentation av stede och prisvinnarna. Kommentator på Akers hus är er Jarl Munk. Välkommen till Akershus slott, hvor vi ska overvære utdelingen av Nobels fredspris for 1978. Akershus slott og festning har lange røtter tillbaka i vår historie. Den blev grundlagt av Norges siste store middelalder konge Håkon den femte Magnusson omkring år 1300. Senere forfalt anlegget og blev først bygget opp igjen under kong Christian den fjerde, eller Christian Kvart som vi ofte sier, på begynnelsen av 1600-tallet. Derfor bærer også den største salen, som vi nu er inne i, navnet Christian den fjerdes sal. Akershus, slik det nå fri... Akershus er resultat av omfattende restaureringsarbeider i vår tid. Vi kaster nå et blikk tilbake på noen av de begivenheter som har ledet opp til dagens fredsprisutdeling. Vi begynner med oktoberkrigen i 1973. Egyptiske styrker klart å sette over kanalen og sette sig fast i Sinai. Dermed mente de å ha reist kjerringer fra det forsmedelige nederlaget i 1967. De kunne se Israel og verden i øynene som like menn, og dette er den grunnleggende forutsetning for den avspenningspolitikk som president Sadat siden har ført. Vi skriver lørdag den 19. november 1977. Flyet med Egypts president Anwar Sadat lander på David Ben Gurion flyplassen utenfor Tel Aviv. Dagen efter taler Sadat til Knesset, den israelske nasjonalforsamling. Bismillah. Bismillah, i Gud den allmektiges navn, slik begynte den egyptiske president sin tale. En tale som var en gjennomgåelse av de arabiske standpunkter i konflikten, og der Sadat med styrke og overbevisning holdt frem det han så som ufravikelige betingelser for en varig fred. Israelsk tilbaketrekking fra de okkuperte områder og opprettelse av et hjemland for palestinerne. Statsminister Begins svartale var et oratorisk mesterverk men ga ingen hållpunkter när det gällt mulige israelske inrömmelser. I september i år kom så avtalen i Camp David som trekker upp en ramme för en fredsavtal mellan Egypt och Israel. Begge parter understrekat att det näppade hade kommit i stand utan president Carters aktiva medverkan. Mr president. Mr president. Good evening to you Mr president. I wish to congratulate you on the award of the Nobel Peace Prize. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 let me reciprocate and congratulate you. Thank you. It's very kind of you. You remember, Mr. President, when we were in Ismailia, I told you that Beersheba is on the way to Stockholm. <laughs> I, I quite remember, yes. So already then we took into consideration that possibility. And now, Mr. President, we both know that the real prize is peace itself. Quite right. I, I quite agree with you, and uh, uh, for sure, uh, it adds a new obligation on both of us to achieve peace in no time. Ah. I agree with you. Yes. Yes. Mr. President, let our two delegations come again together soon next week, and let them resume the negotiations until they reach 
a peace treaty, and we shall sign it with God's help. Wonderful, Mr. President. Very good. And then, of course, we shall invite President Carter to be with us. I beg your pardon? Then we shall invite President Carter to be with us. For sure, he yes. must attend this. Uh, uh, he, deser uh, he deserves this, absolutely. I must, uh, I must say this, really. Uh, uh, he is the, uh, the unknown soldier behind right. all this. That's a very beautiful phrase. Right. Uh, uh, thank you, you very much, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank we you hope to much. see each other uh, on the ceremony of signing of the peace treaty between us. Uh, 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 until we meet there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Goodbye, Mr. President. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Og så er vi tilbake med prisens medaljer og diplomer til president Anders Sadat ved hans stedfortreder, Sayed Marei, og til Israels statsminister Menachem Begin. Prime Minister of Israel, to come to the rostrum and receive the diploma and the gold medal of the Nobel Peace Prize for 1978. And I call upon you, Sayed Marei, to come to the rostrum and receive, on behalf of President Anwar al-Sadat of Egypt, the diploma and the gold medal of the Nobel Peace Prize for 1978. So, go the two frames. skal Åse Lionnes og Menachem Begin Your Majesty Your Royal Highnesses Your Excellences Mr. Mori representative of the President of the Arab Republic of Egypt Madame Chairlady and members of the Nobel Prize Committee, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I ask for my permission first to pay tribute to Golda Meir, my predecessor, a great leader and prime minister who strove with all her heart to achieve peace between Israel and her neighbors. Statsminister Begin inledet med å vise tidligere statsminister Golda Meir den siste æren. And of all peace-loving nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I have come from the land of Israel, the land of Zion and Jerusalem, and here I stand in humility and with pride as a son of the Jewish people and as one of the generation of the Holocaust and redemption. The ancient Jewish people fra Israels land gave the world landet til Sion og Jerusalem, og her står jeg i ydmykhet og med stolthet som en sønn av det jødiske folk, som er en fra generasjonen av dommedag og gjenfødelse. Yishayahu ben Amotz and Micha Hamorashti, having foreseen the spiritual unity of man under God, with his word coming forth from Jerusalem, 
gave the nations of the world the following vision expressed in identical terms. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Statsminister Begin inledet så med et citat fra profetene, de to profetene, Benjamins og Rashti. De kjente ordene om at de skal gjøre sine sverd om til plogjern. Og at ingen nasjon skal løfte sverd mot en annen nasjon. Og de skal ikke høre noe om krig lenger. Vi husker det siste. Even in this century alone, and we know, we look around and see millions of men of all nations are under arms. Intercontinental missiles deposited in the bowels of the earth or lying on the beds of oceans can destroy man and everything he has built. Dessverre gjenspeiler ikke dette dagens virkelighet. Millioner av menn i alle nasjoner står under våpen. Interkontinentale raketter ligger dypt i jorden eller på havbunnen og kan ødelegge alt som menneskene har bygget opp. Under such circumstances, should we, can we, keep our faith in an eternal peace that will one day reign over mankind? Yes, we should, and we can. Perhaps that very capability of total destruction of our little planet, achieved for the first time in the annals of mankind, will one day, God willing, become the origin, the cause, and the prime mover for the elimination of all instruments of destruction from the face of the earth, and ultimate peace prayed for and yearned for by previous generations will become the portion of all nations. Despite the tragedies and the disappointments of the past, we must never forsake that vision, that human dream, that unshakable faith. Hvordan skal vi under disse omstendigheter holde drømmen om evig fred levende? Ja, kanskje nettopp ved vår evne til fullstendig ødeleggelse av vår lille planet. Noe som vi har oppnådd for første gang. Og kanskje dette en gang med Guds vilje vil være årsaken til at vi kan fjerne alle ødeleggelsesmidler fra jordens overflate. Og den endelige fred som har vært generasjonenes håp vil være alle nasjoners eiendom. Peace is all of these and more and more. But in my generation, ladies and gentlemen, there was a time indescribable. Six million Jews Men, women, and children were dragged to a wanton death and slaughtered methodically only because they were born Jews in the heart of the civilized continent. It was not a sudden outburst of human or rather inhuman cruelty that from time to time has happened 
in the history of mankind. It was a systematic process of extermination which unfolded before the eyes of the whole world for more than six years. Statsminister Begin fortsatte så med å minne om den dommedag som hans generasjon har gått igjennom. Seks millioner jøder ble slept til en død og slaktet metodisk ned midt i et sivilisert kontinent, bare fordi de var jøder. And unforgettable exceptions, they were left alone to face the destroyer. At such a time, unheard of since the first generation of men, the hour struck to rise and fight for the dignity of men, for survival for liberty, for every value of the human image a man has been endowed with by the Creator, for every known inalienable right he stands for and lives for. Indeed, there are days when to fight for a cause so absolutely just is the highest human command. Norway has known such days. And men like Max Manus. And so have we. Only in honoring that command comes the regeneration of the concept of peace. Men nettopp i denne dommedagstiden så kom også gjenfødelsen. Timen slo til å stå opp og slåss for menneskeverd, for å overleve, for frihet, for alle menneskelige verdier. Norge har også kjent slike tider, og det har vi også. La det, however, bli deklart og kjent, stresset og kjent, that fighters for freedom hate war. My friends and I learned this precept from the Ev Jabotinsky through his own example and through the one he said for us from Giuseppe Garibaldi. Our brothers in spirit, wherever they dwell, learned it from their masters and teachers. La det være klart, fortsatte Begin, at frihetskjempere hater krig. Mine venner og jeg lærte dette fra Tsev Jabotinsky gjennom hans eget eksempel. Og det eksempel han viste til, gjennom Giuseppe Garibaldi, den italienske frihetskjemper. Because there is no mission in life more sacred. And so, det er ingen livsoppgave som er mer hellig enn kampen for fred. Made endless endeavors to achieve. My colleagues and I have gone in the footsteps of our predecessors since the very first day we were called by our people to care for the future. Despite all the attempts to destroy our people, we went any place, we looked for any avenue, we made any effort to bring about negotiations between Israel and its neighbors, negotiations without which peace remains an abstract idea. Israel, eller det gjenfødte Israel, har alltid kjempet for fred, 
lengtet etter det og gjort endeløs anstrengelser for å oppnå det. Vi var og vi er villige til å reise hvor som helst og prøve hvilken som helst vei for å få i stand forhandlinger mellom Israel og dets naboer. Uten disse forhandlinger blir fred bare et svinnende håp. Throughout its lands there will be freedom of movement, of people, of ideas, of goods. Cooperation and development in agriculture will make the deserts blossom. Industry will bring the promise of a better life. Sources of water will be developed and the almost year-long sunshine will yet be harnessed for the common needs of all the nations. Yes, indeed, the Middle East, standing at the crossroads of the world, will become a peaceful center of international communication between East and West, North and South, a center of human advancement in every sphere of creative endeavor. This and more is what peace will bring to our countries and to our region. Statsminister Begin gikk så gjennom alle de velsignelser og fordeler som en fred ville ha for alle landene i Midtøsten, hvor ørkener kunne blomstre, kulturlivet vokse frem, og det skulle på ny kunne bli et krysningspunkt for alle verdens strømninger, alle verdens handelsveier. When that message reached me, I, without delay or hesitation, extended to President Sadat on behalf of Israel an invitation to visit our country. I told him, you will be received with respect and cordiality. And indeed, so he was received, cordially and respectfully. by the people, by the parliament, and by the government of our nation. We knew and learned that we have differences of opinion. But whenever we recall those days of Jerusalem, we say always that they were shining, beautiful days of friendliness and understanding. Statsminister Begin minnet så om president Sadats besøk i Jerusalem for et år siden. Det var en tid og noen dager som Begin selv beskrev som skinnende dager, vakre dager, fulle av vennskap og forståelse. No more war, no more bloodshed. We shall negotiate and reach agreement. Ikke mer i krig, ikke mer i blodsutgjødelse. Vi skal forhandle og nå frem til enighet. Det var difficult times as well. Let nobody forget that we deal with a conflict of more than 60 years with its manifold tragedies. These we must put behind us in order to establish friendship and make peace the beauty of our lives. Many of the difficulties were overcome at Camp David. Men fortsatte Begin, jeg vil ikke legge skjul på at det også var vanskelige tider. La oss huske på at dette er en konflikt som har vart i mer enn 60 år. Alle disse konflikter og motsetninger må vi legge bak oss for å kunne bygge opp vennskap og fred. Der, despite all the differences, we found solutions for problems agreed on issues, and the framework of peace was signed. With its signature, there was rejoicing in our countries and throughout the world. Statsminister Begin minnet så videre om President Jimmy Carter's store innsats 
Det är att få i stånd Camp David-avtalen. Det var de naturliga, arduous negotiationer för att elaborera och konkludera en peace-treaty som vi promised each other to do at Camp David. The delegations of both countries worked hard and have, I believe, produced a draft document that can serve, if and when signed and ratified, as a good treaty of peace between countries that decided to put an end to hostility and war and begin a new era of understanding and cooperation. Such a treaty can serve as the first indispensable step along the road towards a comprehensive peace in our region. Statsminister Begin fortsatte med att säga att avtalen i Camp David är en God ramme for en fredsavtal mellom Egypt og Israel. Congratulate him, as I did in a direct conversation between Jerusalem and Cairo a few weeks ago on the moral of the announcement. Der på grund av alle disse anstrengelser at president Sadat og jeg har fått Nobels fredspris, og jeg nytter igjen den anledning til å gratulere president Sadat. But ladies and gentlemen, before doing so, permit me to remind us all that today is an important anniversary, the 30th anniversary of the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Let us always remember the magnificently written words of its first article. It expresses the essence of all the declarations of the rights of man and citizen written throughout history. It says, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Menahem Begin sa videre at jeg nå vil uttrykke takk, min dypeste takk fra bunnen av mitt hjerte for den store ære dere har gitt meg. Men la meg også minne om at vi i dag feirer 30-årsdagen for menneskerettighetserklæringen. La oss alltid huske på dens ord om at alle mennesker er født like i verdigheter og i rettigheter. For reasons self-understood, but which every man and woman of good will will accept. I must remind my honored listeners of my brethren and the prisoners who are deprived of one of the most basic rights. Oh, 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 I speak about people of great courage who deserve not only the respect but also the moral support of the free world. I speak about people who even from the depths of the suffering repeat the age-long prayer, Leshana Haba'a Ve'Yerushalayim, next year in Jerusalem. La meg nå minne om alle mine brødre og de fangene som har mistet en av sine mest grunnleggende rettigheter, nemlig å reise hjem. Jeg tenker på de modige menneskene som ikke bare fortjener respekten, men også den moralske støtte i den frie verden. Jeg snakker på vegne av folk som tar dypet av sin lidelse, gjentar den århundre gamle bønnen neste år i Jerusalem. Jeg sier... 
thank you. I thank you for the great distinction. However, it does not belong to me. It belongs to my people, the ancient people and the Renaissance nation that came back in love and devotion after 19 centuries of dispersion and humiliation and ultimately physical destruction to the land of its ancestors. This prestigious recognition is due to this people because they suffered so much, because they lost so many, because they loved peace and wanted with all their hearts for themselves and for their neighbors. On their behalf, I humbly accept the award and in their name, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And may I express to His Majesty, the King, our deep gratitude for the gracious hospitality His Majesty on this occasion bestowed upon my wife and myself. Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, members of the Nobel Peace Prize Committee, Mr. Murray, representative of President Sadat, Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Birgin saw at her mood took the first Nobel Peace Prize was a representative of the name of his people, a people who, after centuries of jealousy and persecution, had found its homeland. He thanked again Kor Olav for the great guest freedom he had met. May I add, one of the first Christian supporters of Theodor Herzl's idea of Jewish renewed statehood, and Frédéric Passy of the French Society for Peace. On December the 10th, 1901, the president of the Norwegian parliament said, the Norwegian people have always demanded that their independence be respected. They have always been ready to defend it, but at the same time, they have always had a keen desire and need for peace. May I, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the people of Israel, respectfully subscribe to this true and noble words. Thank you. Men han begynner ikke minnet om den norske stortingspresidentens ord ved den første Nobelprisutdeling til Røde Kors grunnlegger Henri Dunant. Og han minnet om at det norske folk alltid har ønsket respekt for sin uavhengighet, men samtidig også ønsket fred. Det samme ønsker jeg, og disse ord kan jeg underskrive helt og fullt, sa Begin.